So today we'll be looking at uh, the method, the technique to elicit the patella and ankle reflex. So this is the tendon hammer that we use. So make sure that you obtain an adult sized tendon hammer and not that of a pediatric equivalent. So let us analyze this device. So we have a mass here, which is cushioned to absorb shock and we have a long piece of a rod. So what we basically do is we hold it at the tip of the rod. So do not hold it in close proximity with the head. There's a reason why this long rod has been given. So you hold it here so that, and you have, a, make sure that you have a grip. Don't hold it like this or any variance which will not allow you to secure a grip over the tendon hammer. Okay. So make sure that you're able to swing it. So what happens is, so we are applying momentum here. So momentum is mass and velocity. Mass times velocity is momentum. And what do we mean by velocity? It's a vector unit. So speed with a direction is velocity. So when we have a direction, when we have speed, and when it has a direction, it gives momentum because velocity is present, the mass is present here. So it gives a particular momentum and that brisk episode of introduction of that momentum will elicit a particular reflex that we intend to see. So <clears throat> one way would be to just flex, slightly flex, do not hyper flex the knee slightly just maybe about 40 degrees and make sure that the patient is completely relaxed so to ensure this you can ask the patient to leave the comp his, the burden of the weight of his thigh at the expense of your forearm and where do you knock at the patella ligament so avoid hitting on the bone which can cause uh, pain right and you make sure that you swing so that was the so you, there are two ways you can elicit one is that the extension of the knee or you can even look at the contraction of the quadriceps so once this is done you can straight elicit the ankle reflex you don't have to extend the knee joint once having done with the um, knee reflex again once having done with the knee reflex you cross the ankle over the contralateral limb and make sure that you dorsiflex the ankle you dorsiflex passive dorsiflex and you hit you swing and make sure that the hammer hits on the achilles tendon so with that you will find plantar flexion of the ankle joint okay so that confirms a positive reflex so the knee reflex is mediated by L2, L3 and ankle reflex by S1. So in case you, in a spinal examination, should you have a lesion over the levels of L2 and L3, you might have an absent patella reflex, but an intact um, ankle reflex. And if the lesion is at S2, isolated lesion, this is applicable to isolated lesions. If isolated lesion is at the level of S1, S2, then you may have a, an intact uh, patella reflex and an absent ankle reflex.